Hello, my name's Michael Flynn. My task within Leighton Buzzard TV is a series of programmes called In Search of Excellence. In and around Leighton Buzzard, we have a whole wealth of talent. And my job is to go around interviewing people and showing you what they get up to. From sports, hobbies, work, whatever, it's excellent. Well, here we are at the home and studio of Jeff Hutchins. Jeff is a professional artist. He's been painting for 30 years and teaching for 10 years in and around Leighton Buzzard. We've asked Jeff to show us a range of his paintings, which is a terrific variety, and then to give us a little taster lesson of how he teaches. So let's go and see Jeff. <laughs> We are now in Jeff's studio and we're going to ask Jeff to please talk us through your paintings. Thank you. Okay, well the first picture I'd like you to look at is this marine picture behind me. It uh, depicts a sea action around about the time of Nelson. I painted the picture 20 years ago. It's acrylic on canvas, made to look like an oil in fact, and has been mistaken as, as an oil more than once. Um, there were difficulties with it, obviously, because it's a very complicated work, uh, but it's a subject that's a bit close to my heart and I really enjoy painting it. Getting the masts in the right place is important and making sure the wind is going in the same direction as the ships, and that's indicated by flags. Really important. Could be a stupid mistake if the flag's flying in the wrong direction. Um, I still like the picture. I'm very pleased with it and I hope you like it. OK, well here, we, here we've got one of my science fiction pictures. Large acrylic on canvas board. Uh, I got into science fiction because I was originally commissioned to do Captain Kirk's ship, um, which led to numerous others, altogether there's about eight of them. Um, this is about the last but one, the first of the Star Wars pictures I did. And... Um, it took me 18 months to do this. It wasn't a commission and it was the most complicated image I've ever attempted. Uh, I couldn't find a plate big enough to do that circle so I had to go and buy a compass. Uh, this is the Millennium Falcon. Uh, those of you fans out there will know. The brief from George Lucas apparently was make it look like a 57 Cadillac that's gone rusty. Which is, it works quite well there. The overall picture of the composition is mine uh, but I think it works. Now this is the moon of Endor, I believe, and down on the planet there, the star is fighting the bad guys with all the furry guys. Um, so there we are. I've still got the original. We've sold lots and lots of prints off this picture, uh, mainly through Bid Up TV, I believe. Okay, the picture now uh, is a watercolour gouache, painted in 1992. Um, depicting three aircraft of 74 Squadron, First World War that is, Royal Flying Corps, um, SE-5A patrol it's called. Um, the picture was exhibited, actually it was the only time I've ever submitted a picture to the Aviation Artists Exhibition of the Year in London at the Carriage Book Gallery and to my surprise they accepted it and exhibited it for the week. Um, I've kept the picture ever since as I quite like it. Um, and the nearest aircraft, I believe, was made at Austin's in Longbridge in 1917, and it was actually flown by Major Mick Bannock himself. I like the picture. Well, well, Jeff, thank you very much for showing us your paintings. My, the, my pleasure, Michael. Now's the time for the lesson. So what are you going to show us, Jeff? Well, I thought you'd like to see, or the viewers might like to see, a few little tricks of the trade. Uh, it is difficult when you're starting to paint watercolours. If there's nobody to guide you and give you some information, you can very quickly get into a lot of trouble. So, let me show you. Tree, very quickly. Large tree, 200 metres away. Here we go. Can you see this all right? Okay, over the top look. Like that. Bit more paint. See that, Michael? Wow. Okay, bit more, bit more mud colour. Underneath, this tree is not in very good condition, a bit unhealthy, end of the summer. There we go, that'll do for that bit. Tree, 
Tree. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> okay, one tree. Let's add a little bit more colour. Uh, this is an olive green. That's given me a that's made it a bit more of a khaki colour now. So that's that's a little do. I'll do it again. You want to see it again? Let's place it. Same kind of tree. Um, I've got no idea what kind of tree it is. We'll just call it a Jeffrey tree for the moment. Okay. Okay, a bit more. And these gaps in the art world are called sky holes. They allow you to put detail in and give it some depth and perspective. Here we go, a bit more. See, notice how I'm using the brush. Side of the brush, just touching the paint. It's quite watery. A bit there. And then we'll do a bit down here, another bit more. So I just smudge it on, nothing special. Now, now you'll notice that a lot of the arty, they'll tell you, wet the paper, do all kinds of things. You don't need to do that. If you'd wet the paper, I'd be in terrible trouble. Um, but the paper's damp enough in the bit I'm working on, okay? Now, I quite like that at the moment, but I think I could add some more to make it a bit more interesting. How about a bit of mustard gone off? No. I'll go with burnt sienna, terracotta. There it is, look. Mixing it on the palette. Look, just a little bit away from the other colour. Can you see the terracotta coming? Lovely colour. There we are. A bit more of that. Drop that into the tree. Still damp. Like that. Down here, it's gone a bit autumn. Yeah, I was just going to say, Jeff, the autumn's coming. It looks nice. Yeah, it does yeah, I'll do an autumn tree yeah. in a moment. Right, now some branches. Burnt umber again, dark brown. One of the tricks is don't make it too long, the base of the tree. There we are. Up into the tree, branches. Wow. That's nice fantastic. big, nice big mature tree from a distance. Can you see that okay? Tell right. me, Jeff, can do you give lessons in this? Yes, like, yes we? I do. Yeah, this is part of the first lesson for, for people who've never done it before. And I do repeat it regularly because uh, when I say to, to my students we'd like to do some tree practice, there's usually nods all around the room everybody likes to practice trees once they've got past the initial difficulty of uh, working out how they're going to put it together so here we go let me just let me show you another the same same kind of tree how about a, a magnificent oak tree um, in in the autumn oaks like that but it can look like a mushroom if you're not careful so here we go I'm just going to do it all in this nice red color Again, just like that with an oak, of course, it's a massive tree. You can fill a bit in. Now, no, I might be tempted here just to drop a little bit of darkness in, just just to touch it, just a little bit of brown. Look, just show bits where you're looking through the tree, and there's a shadow. Can you see that, Michael? Yeah. Like that. There we go for the, with an oak of course, it's going to be very, very massive, great trunk and it's very short, like that, underneath the tree. Uh, that's an oak tree. So where can we get lessons then, Jeff? In Leighton Buzzard. Leighton Buzzard, through Leighton Buzzard Adult Education Service. Just ring um, Riverside and uh, they can book you in on one of my courses. I go, I've got three courses in Leighton. All three are at the uh, Learning Warehouse on Groveby Road. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jeff, thank you very much indeed. That's been wonderful. My pleasure. Well, Thanks, Michael. Right. Well, there we go, folks. That's the first search for excellence, and I'm sure you agree it was really excellent. Now, Jeff's details are here on your screen. And that's the end of the first search for excellence. Join us next time when it could be you.